All right, so let's talk about flexible seating in the secondary classroom. So these are some items that I've tried and just a little bit of feedback that I have from them. So the first thing is stools. This is probably my favorite and the student's favorite. Um, we started with these stools and a few things about them. They Students could easily pull these apart. Um, so you can imagine rolling the top to the bottom of them. Um, and also they made um, a good amount of noise. The students would rock really hard on them. And so for these, while they were good, um, I would definitely go with a stool more like this. These have rubber bottoms, um, and also there aren't pieces for them to pull apart here. So the only downside to this one was really the height of the stool, and I just ordered the short ones, and I probably should have ordered the tall ones, but that was the only downside to those. Now, our favorite stool was this type. It was taller, um, it was comfier, um, it was also quiet, but it was more expensive. So it did last the longest out of the stools, but it did cost more. So the second thing that we tried was bouncy bands. And I tried two different types. This bouncy band lasted about a year. So they came in a pack and they did really good. They're really popular. They were easy to slip on the desk if you have the desks that are connected to the seat, but they did only last about a year before the students were able to destroy them. Um, and then these worked really great for connected desks. So um, not so much on my desk that weren't connected, but on my connected desk, those worked great. The other bouncy bands that I tried were this type. And um, this type did not really work really well. Um, my students would just snap them, but it also may have been the type of desk we had because we had the desks that were connected. Um, so this type, I would definitely recommend more for elementary age students. Secondary students, they were able to break them or they would slide them down really easily and not be able to use them. So some other options, we tried lots of options, would be a yoga ball. I tried different yoga balls, different size yoga balls, different textures yoga balls and the yoga balls can become a distraction very easily um, it came a point where students all wanted the yoga balls um, yoga balls are great for bouncing so there are many options for distractions with a yoga ball that the other seating options didn't really provide the next one is a podium. So you might not think about this as a flexible seating option, but it was a really good option if you have students that need to move or maybe they need to stand up. Um, I know that I enjoy standing up when I teach, so I would just put a podium at the back of my classroom. Students could go stand at it. Um, and I put a stool back there, so if they wanted to sit down, they could. But a lot of times the students would just go stand there or if they need to rock or something like that, it would let them move while we were teaching and they could still take the notes. The last one is these rocker chairs. So these were semi-popular, but they're really low to the ground. So some students really disliked it because of how close they were just to the floor in the classroom. So these are some options that I have used um, in my classroom. One thing I would suggest is if you plan on using flexible seating, um, a lot of companies will send you like one or maybe two for you to test. And that's a really good way to find out whether you like them or not. Um, another thing I would recommend is there's a lot of grants or opportunities for teachers to get flexible seating in their classroom. So before you go and buy all of it yourself, I would reach out to companies and ask because a lot of companies are willing to help me get flexible seating in my classroom.